and embrace the opportunity to make a difference in the lives of every individual and every family in the 6th Congressional District. That, my friends, is the legacy of Norm Dix that I hope to continue. I am so grateful to the voters of this district for the awesome responsibility that you have given me to represent you. You know, uh, campaigns are hard. <laughs> You know, parts of this process may constitute a violation of the Geneva Convention. I am very grateful uh, to Bill Driscoll, who ran a spirited campaign and who just offered a very gracious call. I appreciate his service to our country, and I hope that he will be a partner to me in tackling some of the challenges on issues that we agreed on over the course of this campaign. I think about these eight months, I think about the people I intend to wake up every morning fighting for. You know, tonight this isn't about me. It's about the people I've met across this district who I will work hard to represent every day, whose voices are not always heard. I think about a woman I met in Hoquiam, a small business owner, a mom who told me that with unemployment around 14% in her county, she was just concerned about whether her community would have a future. She said she didn't want her community's top export to be her kids. We have got to get people back to work, and I am so honored to have an opportunity to work for her and for her kids every single day. I want to work for the group of sailors that I met at the Ivy Green Cemetery in Bremerton, pulling weeds to clean that place up, and talking with them about everything from veterans benefits to our presence in the Middle East to parking in Bremerton. I want to work for them to make sure that they are safe when they serve and to make sure that they are taken care of when they come home. in Southworth who told me that she'd been diagnosed with leukemia and that she was facing treatments that would cost $50,000. And she told me that she was so fearful that Medicare and Social Security wouldn't be there for her. My job will be to work for her every day and for seniors like her so that they can live with dignity. man I met in Belfair one night who said that he had given up on politics. Given the dysfunction in our nation's capital, he said he was thinking of even not voting this year. I want to work every day to be part of making a Congress that functions again. It's not going to be easy, and it's not going to happen overnight. But the start, start needs to be that we start defining, stop defining success as making the other guys look like failures. Yeah. And start working together to get things done. So whether you're a Democrat, an Independent, or a Republican, whether you voted for me or not, I want to thank you for participating in this great democratic process, and I want to commit to working my heart out for you and more importantly to working with you to get our economy working again and getting our country moving forward again. There are so many people in this room I want to thank. I want to thank our extraordinary volunteers. We had awesome people power and you made the difference in this campaign knocking on doors and putting up signs and making phone calls. I was in Port Angeles last night, and one of the volunteers, yeah, Port Angeles, um, one of my friends came up, she was the wife of my pediatrician growing up, and she said she had been out with her eight-year-old granddaughter knocking on doors that day. And she told her that her, she told me her grandmother, her granddaughter had a great time. 
She said it was just like trick-or-treating, but without the candy. <laughs> For those of you who have helped, whether you are young or whether you are old, thank you. I want to give a special shout-out to some folks. give a special shout out to some of the people who have put in so much time taking me around festivals and knocking on doors and standing in traffic putting up yard signs there are too many people to list by name but I appreciate each and every one of you let's give our great volunteers a round of applause extraordinarily generous donors who helped us pay for yard signs and TV ads and our talented staff. By the end of this campaign, no one would sit within three pews of me at church. <laughs> so it, I want to thank those who have been so generous and let you know it is now safe to get near me again. <laughs> Up for the while. I want to thank some of our early supporters, some of my legislative colleagues who are here, some of our local leaders, including Mayor Strickland and my friend Ryan Mello, who ran my first campaign, and Pat McCarthy, and folks throughout this community who, who stepped out for me very early, and I'm very grateful to each of them. I value their support and look forward to working with them in the years ahead. I want to thank my legislative assistant, Colleen Thompson, who has held down the fort in my legislative office. I am so proud of our campaign team, our awesome interns, and every single one of our amazing staff. Matthew Randazzo in Port Angeles, who did amazing things over the course of this campaign. The least of which was um, helping us find gas right before we broke down uh, near oh Lake Crescent. If it, if it had not been for Matthew Randazzo, I would still be on a roadside in Clallam County. <laughs> I want to thank Reed Claridge and the great interns we had in, in uh, Grace Harbor County. Reed helped sign for us in the rain with a smile on his face and a fever of heart. I want to thank Carlos and Andrea in Silverdare, who were field machines. They, had, they did an awesome job and had terrific interns. I want to thank Joe and Spencer, Lee and Lauren and others who parachuted in in these last couple weeks to help us out. You guys were awesome. I want to thank our great Tacoma team, our awesome interns including those who went off to college and came back for more this last week. I want to thank our terrific staff of Bill, Rosa, Josh, Sarah, Alex, Nicholas, Joe, and Hannah. You guys put in countless hours. Uh, they had the special pleasure of driving me to Ferry Docks at 4 o'clock in the morning, listening to 80s tunes on my iPod. If I haven't taught them anything about politics, I hope I've taught them something about Duran Duran. I am proud of the work you guys did. I am so proud of the positive campaign that we ran. I want to give special props, and I know uh, I, I will wrap up soon. I want to give special props to two of our campaign team. Meadow Johnson. <laughs> Meadow is one freakishly talented woman and was with us through, through thick and thin. I am so glad, Meadow, that you agreed to be part of this campaign and that you even came out sign waving with me this morning. I want to thank my campaign manager, Chris Gregory. <laughs> has an awesome strategic mind and is absolutely unflappable. 
I will admit, I get occasionally flapped. <laughs> and Chris, I want to thank you for your hard work, your smart work, and for your friendship. I want to end by acknowledging the most important parts of this campaign for me, and that's my family. signs for me. I want to thank my in-laws who continued their streak of being here every election I've ever run in. I want to thank my brother Jason, who gave me moral support throughout this process, is the, is the only person who gets even more frustrated than I do about negative campaigning. I want to thank my wife Jennifer. support to me throughout this process. She is my best friend and an awesome mom, and I am so glad that I lucked out and got to sit next to her on an airplane 16 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Eight months ago and two days, Jennifer and I sat down for dinner in Gig Harbor and talked about taking the plunge and running for Congress. Hers was the first vote I got. <laughs> We laid out the pros and the cons. The main pro was we need to get people back to work, and I know something about that. The main con was that Congress is a mess, and we have two little kids. Some of you heard me say this, but in the end, Jennifer and I decided to do this because Congress is a mess, and we've got two little kids. We need to fix this, guys. I am so, I am so hopeful for my two little girls, Sophie and Tess. Every election night for the last six years, I have sat down and typed my little girls a letter to let them know why on earth their father would get involved in this craziness. Let me, let me tell you what I'm going to write to them tonight. I'm going to tell them that times may be tough, but the American spirit is tougher. I'm going to tell them that millions of Americans cast their votes today because they believe our tomorrows can be brighter than our todays. And I'm going to tell them that I decided to do this because I want a better future for them. Where they can get a great education, a great job, where we protect the planet for them, and where discrimination of any kind is a thing of the past. I will spend every day fighting for each of you. Thank you so much.